It's time for your NXT 21st of November. And by God, NXT, it always delivers. It always produces a half-decent entertainment show. And you know what? Shawn Michaels, I tip my hat to you. You wink your wonky eye back. You're the man, Sean. You're the heartbreak kid. And, uh, yeah, he can produce it in the ring. And he can sure as hell produce it behind the scenes. Because, you know, I'm not going to pretend this is, like, the greatest show in the history of wrestling but NXT it's 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 a fun watch see comparing to waking up yesterday to watch Raw and comparing it to watch to watching this it's night and day man honestly it's night and day and this is a fun watch make no mistake about it and I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed this show so let's kick off this show with our first match we've got Noam Dar taking on Chad Gable for the WWE NXT Heritage Cup I mean, my only problem with this is is like the fact that it's got all these rounds and it's like I mean like six rounds it's like what match does end in a draw no one dar wins the match is all right you know but afters Maxine Dupree slapping Lash Legend um Legend avoids a uh, make out session with Otis after Otis starts flirting with her is Maxine gonna be a wee bit. Depressed? Absolutely. Potentially, man. Uh, the family then had a championship celebration at a fancy restaurant. We begin to see this. They're arriving. It's like Tony Soprano 2.0, man. It was it was brilliant. Seriously, it was Tony Soprano's wee bowling shirts. Don's is like... See, Don's... Stack, sorry, is, is just reminds me more of like a Christopher, who was never the underboss, but obviously that's his title here, so... He reminds me more of a. It does remind me more of Christopher, but at the same time, what 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 else would you call him? That's the only thing uh, we've got really to look at here. But uh, yeah, I mean, this segment continues on throughout the night. But them arriving at dinner, and the blonde, she's she's all right, isn't she? She is no bad. But then see Carmel Hayes having a conversation with Trick Williams in the locker room. He tells him that you need to get into the Survivor Iron Challenge on your own. Handle it tonight. Shia Lee then attacks Lester Wild Valkyrie on the stage. Wild Valkyrie re receives medical attention, and just like that, just there's one, two, three, A, B, C, one, two, three. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It's all over because Angel Garza and Alberto Carrillo's match with Idris Enofi and Malik Blade happens next. And the uh, weird thing about this is these two attack the family. But yet they have a match, it's like, well, what sort of weird chronological order are we having? I'm going to assume. I love a rainy night. I love a rainy night. I love a rainy night. Because the fire that rats up my mind. But I'm going to assume that Lyle Falkyrie and Zia Lee were supposed to have a match uh, at this point. But then they didn't. So, medical attention. But uh, yeah, Angel Garza and Bertle Kirill win. Their segments of the family are all right, but it's more the family into who. I mean, I, I just do. I, I I just do not care about these two. I never have cared about these two. I never will care about these two. They're two guys that have been in WWE for almost seems like a decade now. I mean, the fact that next year's two thousand twenty four, take away ten years, it would near enough be a decade. If we're being brutally honest about it, uh, they may have a third match. Carmel Hayes taking on Josh Briggs. The winner qualifies for the Survivor Challenge, boy. Um, but Lexus King is out there. Hayes gets distracted by him. And Briggs defeats Carmelo Hayes to advance into the Iron Survivor Challenge. I seriously didn't expect that to happen. And it's just went ahead and happened. So, holy shit. What is that all about, man? Absolutely petrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Absolutely mental to say the least but um yeah that's it done and we move on could not did not expect this to happen and it did happen they have Lyle Falkyrie telling Mackenzie Mitchell backstage there's no way I'm letting Shia Lee leave with the NXT championship not a chance and uh, then we got another funny segment we've seen Fawn Wagner attend dinner with Mr Stone and his family and what I liked with this like the parallels between this and then like the family obviously having their dinner um, we then see a video package about the ongoing investigation taking place in the chase shoe. Basically, just all the past couple of weeks built up into one wee segment here. This was very well done, and you know what? Round the applause for me because it's it. 
It's entertaining, damn it. So yeah, some more crazy stuff going on there. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Wesley and Dominic Mysterio have a segment. Um, Wesley talks about, yeah, I did all these things with the belt, and Dominic Mysterio kind of just buries him. He's like, yeah, you know what? Their opinion, the fans, is worthless like yours. I don't care what you did with this belt, because the fact is, I've got it now. You, you took time off. You lost to Melo. You lost to Corbin. You lost to Djokovic. You suck, because these people love you. He can deserve a title shot. Not a chance, buddy. Um, and yeah, challenge except that looks like we're getting Wesley taken on. Dominic, do da dum da 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 Who knows how this is going to go? And um, Brooks Jensen then congratulates Josh Briggs on his big victory. Uh, but Phil Henry, he's not happy. But Big Briggs blowing them off earlier could have been there. Took out of context of that one. They have Blair Devonport versus Tia Hale. Booker, uh, one of will qualify for Iron Survivor Women's one. Uh, Booker T said in commentary that Blair Devonport is like a computer and ever since she was 16 she's been downloading that wrestling data and um, knowledge and experience pretty weird, Blair Devonport wins, wasn't really expected Baron Corbin then has a promo he's like, the only person that can slay the dragon is the dragon himself he's like, I kiss my wife Bela Dragunov every night what do you do, you've got no one, no family no loved ones you're a jobber, essentially and it was alright promo from Baron Corbin, we have Eddie Fork taking on Charlie Dempsey, Eddie Fork wins, this is, this right here is the epitome of jobbers in WWE, I mean honestly, it's just like four guys, like Drew Gulak, how is that guy still at a job? Honestly, man. can someone tell me, how Drew Gulak still on a job, I need to know, I need to know, um, the rest of them though, they suck as well, uh, we did have the big ending to the family dinner um, in the family at uh, the bada bing bada boo they get attacked by Humberto Carrillo and Angel Garza in the parking lot they escape it's like, they want a title match they got it it's on so the title match is on here between all these jabronis um, but I thoroughly enjoyed that then we get uh, the announcement that Wesley will battle Johnny Gargano Bronson Reed and Carmelo Graham's in a fatal four way match the winner will battle NXT Dominic Mysterio, American champion. So, uh, is it weird this? Because literally, the other three are on the main roster. Bizarre. Then we get our main event. Uh, Falkyrie defeats Sia Shia Lee. And that is, your, that is your show. And segments were good. Matches were a bit poor. So I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10 troops. That is it though for your NXT review. 4 out of 10. Till next time. Peace.